Hello students, this is Mr. Root, starting 2-8, where we'll be proving angle relationships. By the end of this, students will be able to write proofs involving supplementary, complementary, congruent, and right angles. Um, lots of theorems and postulates and properties in this section, so make sure you have your theorem book with you and a highlighter. First off, we got postulate 2-11, which is the angle addition postulate. Very similar to the segment addition postulate. What it says is, and I'm going to highlight this part and I suggest you do the same, all right, is we've got this angle ADB. All right, oh, if D is inside ABC, so we got a point, and then BD. All right, if it's inside, basically it says ABD plus DBC equals ABC. So part of the angle plus the other part of the angle equals the whole angle. So in your theorem book, I would highlight that part. All right. Part plus part equals whole. All right. So we have our first example. We've got actually three angles. All right. And it says angle 1 is 23 degrees. The measure of angle ABC, which is the whole thing, is 131. And we need to find the measure of angle 3. This says justify each step as well. So when we justify, we can do, um, we, we're not doing an actual proof, all right? But we need to either show our work or explain our answers. Now, we just learned about the angle addition postulate. We have this big angle, and we've got little parts of the angle, all right? So we're going to use it. And we can say that the parts of the angle, each little angle, adds up to be the big angle, and that's that angle postulate, angle addition postulate. All right, from here... We know some things. All right, now, you can show work. Um, well, you can justify by either just showing your work or explaining each step with how you do it. All right, kind of like a formal proof. Up to you. All right, at this point, we know that um, angle 1 is 23 degrees. All right, the whole thing is 131 degrees. And from the picture, because it's labeled, we know that angle 2 is a right angle. All right, so we can either plug those in or you can say, substitution and then rewrite it but basically taking 23 put it in for angle 1 All right. 90 degrees put it in for angle 2 and then 131 degrees put it in for our total angle so we're gonna end up with 23 plus 90 Plus, and I'm just realizing I should have put the M on all these, and I made that mistake. So because we are talking about the measurement, not just the angle and its properties, we're just talking about the measurement of angle 3. So I'm going to put it in here. Um, equals 131. All right. From here, we got to add some stuff together. So we got 23 plus the measure of angle 3. Now, you can, if you'd like, just say simplify, or we could call that the addition property. Okay. But again, as long as you're showing work, I mean, this is an algebraic problem that we've done many times, so I know that you know how to do it. Um, so you don't need to explain your steps, but you can. As long as you're showing work, that's fine, and that's kind of what we're used to. So we get the measure of angle 3 equals, is that 18? Yeah, 18 degrees. All right. and it's always good to just double check with the calculator. You get to use it, may as well. All right, next we have the supplement theorem and the complement theorem. And what I'd like you to do is I would suggest highlighting the hypothesis of each of these statements. So the supplement theorem says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So go ahead and highlight the hypothesis. And the reason I'm having you highlight the hypothesis of all these, um, of your theorems, is because that's the part that we're looking for. All right. If, if something follows that, then we can... Um, 
um, use the then part. We can use the conclusion. All right. So now we're taking and then complement. If they add, if they form a right angle, then they're complementary. If they make a linear pair, they're supplementary. All right. And then we're taking a look at example two. We've got six and seven, and it says angle six and angle seven form a linear pair. Oh, then take a look at your theorem book. Look for anything that starts with linear pair. Oh, we know this theorem says if two angles form a linear pair, ah, they're supplementary, and their measurements add up to 180. So if you want, you can say the measure of angle 6 plus the measure of angle 7 equals 180 degrees. Or you can just jump straight to it, and it's okay. Um, as you're doing your homework, I expect you guys to have um, the picture, okay? In this one, in this case, it's easy, and then you need your work. You don't need every single step um, and justification unless it says justification. Uh, we can jump straight here. This is you can say this, or you can say the supplemental theorem. So, and then just showing your work. Three x plus thirty-two equal. Whoops. plus 5x plus 12 equals 180. All right, well, 3x plus 5, we got, we know that's 8x plus 44 equals 180 minus 44 on both sides. Right, justifying is basically just showing work. So we got 8x equals 136. Divide that by 8. x is 17. Okay, now here's the thing. It does not want, we need to find x, but we also need to find the measure of 6 and 7. So the measure of 6 is 3 times 17 plus 32. So the measure of angle 6 is going to be 83. Now you can figure out 7 two ways. You can plug it in or you can do 83 plus angle 7 equals 180. So for angle 7 I'm going to just do 180 minus 83. So the measure of angle 7 equals 97 degrees. Right. Hold on. Oh, get that highlighter out again. All right, we got properties. We got the reflexive property, symmetric property, and transitive property. All right, these are of congruence. We've done equality, same thing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, congruent supplements theorem. Okay, now this doesn't have an if-then statement, but basically it says, all right, I want you to highlight angles supplementary to the same angle. And then same thing with congruent complements, angles complementary to the same angle. Basically what it says is if two angles all right, are supplementary to the same angle, so like 1 and 2 are supplementary, 2 and 3 are supplementary, well, since they both have to add to 2 to equal 180, they equal each other. Same thing here. All right. Um, okay. Moving on. Vertical angles. If you have two vertical angles, they are congruent. Okay, perpendicular lines. All right, so just highlight perpendicular lines. They intersect to form four right angles. All right angles are congruent. Perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Here we go. If we if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each is a right angle. If two angles form a linear pair, so we got another one that starts with a linear pair. Two congruent angles. Okay. Oh, we got an example. All right, so 
we have to, this says proof, so we need to do a proof in the figure A, B, E, and D, B, C are right angles. Now, we're given some things that are right angles. So we're going to look through our theorem book and look for the stuff about right angles. I'm going to go back. Oh, I know that 210 says all right angles are congruent. And I also know that if two common sides of two adjacent angles form a right angle, then the angles are complementary. So I can use the complement theorem, or I can use all right angles are congruent. Um, either one works. If we work this out, we could, we could solve this proof using either one. We just have to use different substitution. I'm going to just say that all right angles are congruent. I'm going to use that one. Now this one doesn't have a name, so I need to write the whole thing out. Okay. Now since these angles are congruent, we know that the measures are equal. Definition of congruent. Okay. Um, so we have ABE equals DBC. Now we've also learned right away we have the segment addition posture. That we have the parts plus the parts equal the whole. And actually, if I back up, even before this state, all right, we got this pretty easily. And a lot of people are like, well, where do I go next after that? Look to what you're proving. ADB. I need to get ADB or ABD into the equation somehow. Oh, well, I know that ADB plus DBE equals ABE, the whole thing. All right, same thing. I, I need to put EBC in here somewhere. Oh, well, EBC is right here. I know that's part of an angle. Oh, and I know something about this whole angle. So take a look at what you need, and then you can plug in from there. Angle addition postulate. Okay, and that's just what we learned earlier. Um, that's the postulate. Okay, so part plus part equals whole. Now from here, I've got ABE, and I've got ABE. All right, so I'm just going to substitute this part in for ABE. All right, oh, I've got DBC. And I've got DBC. I'm going to substitute this part in for DBC. And I can just move on to the next one. And I can show that they equal each other. All right? And that's just substituting. Substituting the stuff from step 4 into step 3. All right? So your steps that you substituted with. Okay? And at this point, we notice that they both have DBE. So let's take that out of there. Let's subtract DBE from both sides. And we'll end up with the measure of ABD equals the measure of EBC. All right now, this is close, but not quite what we want. We know the measures are equal. Well, if the measures of angles are equal, then the angles are congruent. And that's that definition of congruent angles. Or you could just say the definition of congruent. And we can kind of move back and forth. So we proved it. Hooray. Hope oh, example four. If three and four are vertical angles. So we got to go back. All right. Do we have a theorem or a postulate dealing with vertical angles? And I'm looking at my stuff and I see, oh, two angles are vertical. They are congruent. All right. Okay. Well, I know that they're vertical. So I can just go ahead and set them equal. And say, this is the vertical angles theorem. Oh, 3 equals 4. All right. Okay. And so you can just plug in. Got 6x plus 2. Since they're congruent, we also know that they're equal. So we can jump straight, because this just says justify. So we can kind of jump some steps. We don't have to justify every single step. X minus 14. Okay. From here, we're going to minus 6x on both sides. We're also going to add 14 on both sides. Okay. And then you're going to end up dividing by 2. If you, if you work this out, you should get an example. Or an answer of x equals 2. All right, and then we got to plug it back in. All right, we're looking for 3, looking for 4. I'm going to let you guys do that on your own. So if you'd like, you can pause this video and keep and keep going. All right, but after you plug it in, measure of angle 3 should be 14, and the measure of angle 4 should be 2. No, they're vertical angles. That doesn't make sense. X equals 2, 2, 2. All right, we'll talk about this in class. Is this right? What the heck? All right, vertical angles are... That's okay. We'll talk about it in class. Talk to you later. Okay, I found my mistake. It's actually not 2. All right, I have to divide by 2, so X equals 8, and that'll get us the correct answer. All right, talk to you in class.